Hey, what's up, everybody? It's One Peg High. Uh, so I'm pretty confident that after about eight and a half hours of testing today on stream that uh, I can give you guys the min-max guide for the AP system. Uh, we were able to discern a whole bunch of differences with the prior season's uh, leaderboard system, the AP system, but most all of it, uh, like just about 99%, let's say, of the prior guide that I made for season one is still viable as a strategy. In fact, I still say it's the best possible strategy that you're going to see in order to be able to maximize the AP for your character to get them to as high of a rank as possible. However, I do believe that the devs are going to modify the rank requirements, primarily because the amount of AP that's required once you get to like Exemplar 3 and above Above, like most people that are proficient at this game are not going to be capable of pulling that off uh, and I'll give you numbers and once you start looking at the numbers and realize like what we're actually getting into here you start to see that it's not really humanistically possible you would have to be exploiting with teammates help or more than likely having some software assist you so that you uh, found really really good stuff or were able to uh, kill stuff very 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 quickly anyway um, on to the guide and we'll also talk about luck because i also tested luck and while luck is good it's it's not going to beat the current system okay so here i am sitting at the the table as you can see i'm a level 34 warlock i've been grinding away on warlock since we went live uh it, now that we have the leaderboard uh this is where i'm basically sitting at it pathfinder won after just a single morning of trying to grind away on this if we start looking at the leaderboard system and i want to go through this really quickly under the details section you can see what the point requirements are for each level and while the entrance fees at the very beginning are incredible low and don't end up putting a whole lot of pressure on once you start getting into about the pathfinder level it starts to get very 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 expensive and really what we want to pay attention to are the final levels here which is exemplar exemplar 2 1 and then demigod goblin caves for these last three ranks is a thousand twelve hundred and fourteen hundred frost mountain is eleven hundred thirteen hundred and fifteen hundred and howling crypts is thirteen hundred fifteen hundred and seventeen hundred ap in order to be able to maintain your current position in your ranks and that is an awful lot now there have been modifications to the system that reward more ap than what we saw per run last time i want to go through the ap guide cover luck and then we'll get into the rest so much like my original ap guide uh the the way that the best way i guess in my opinion to be able to run these is to just start off with the essentials and the essentials are as follows uh, you really don't need anything other than, say, a spell book and maybe a magic staff, and then the tried and true owl pendant. In this case, the owl pendant needs to be a two knowledge, three additional memory capacity pendant. And the reason for that is because when we look at our spells, we have Hydra, Life Drain, and Hellfire. You need five additional memory capacity in order to be able to use these three spells on the warlock. Other than that, you can, for all intents and purposes, be naked. Now, you obviously would want to be able to bring, or you would need a casting focus of some kind so this is the essential layout now you can bring a gray spell book and a gray long sword should you so choose this will still work totally fine the baseline idea is that you have the ability to use hydra life drain and hellfire now as a stretch goal if you really want to you can grab some extra knowledge i personally recommend bloodstained blade for easy mob clear and bolt of darkness now the jury's out depending on whatever it is that you want to run you can do phantomize i prefer to use blood pact because i like demon form and then i choose these talents a lot of people like using damage reflect a lot of people like malice a lot of people like infernal pledge because you don't take as much damage from the mobs because there's a 25 percent reduction etc etc it is completely completely up to you there is also something to be said now about using torture mastery considering that the base hp restore is now two you can run this however you like i highly recommend a long sword only because the mob clear when you learn how to parry and repost is very significantly faster than just about anything else that you're going to do other than that i would recommend bringing at least a green pickaxe if you can afford it bring in a blue one for the extra interaction speed you hold the pickaxe in your hand and loot a chest it works out really well aside from that bring lock picks because there are a lot of locked chests from here you can just go into high roller as I'm working my way through this run, you're going to start noticing a couple of things. First, uh, I started off this with only a longsword and a spellbook, like I had said at the start. Uh, however, in this case, what I tend to do is focus on bringing in enough knowledge just for a little bit more comfortability when it comes to casting stuff like life drain so that I'm not standing there trying to drain something for uh, HP forever. Uh, I've found that a sweet spot is somewhere north of about 20 knowledge. In this case, I think I have 23. 
but that's just quality of life stuff. At the end of the day, all you really need is five additional spell capacity, memory capacity, in order to be able to cast Hydra, Life Drain, and Hellfire, like I said before. You'll also notice that in this case, I'm just grabbing random pieces of gear and putting them on. In subsequent runs, the min-max strategy here is to just replace every piece of gear that you're wearing out, with the exception of my jewelry and my weapons. Uh, unless you want to do that, which is absolutely fine, depending on how you're playing this, you can. It will be extra AP. Anything that you wear out of the, of the match, of the game, that is still marked as looted will count as additional AP for you. So if it's all blues, it's going to be something like an additional 200 AP just for wearing out uh, something in each slot that is worth uh, like a blue or better in terms of its AP value. For example, if you were wearing a piece of purple gear that was found in raid in each slot, that would be 300 AP. Just flat 300 that you otherwise wouldn't have had. And in the case of a min-max strategy, that is a substantial amount, especially considering how much it costs to get into the dungeon when you're looking at your later ranks. Treasure is still the exact same values as it was before, and if you want to see exactly what those treasure values are, I would highly recommend going over to the wiki. As of today, it is still up to date. Uh, those values are accurate based on my testing that we did uh, together in chat today. Uh, after about eight hours, we were able to verify that every piece of treasure that we found was equivalent in value to what was on the table. In addition to that, Treasure also receives what is called Item Achieve AP. So that's where the, the wearables, armor and weapons and whatnot end up uh, falling into categorically. Those items have AP equivalent for their sale value. So blues are six AP per slot, purples are 10 AP per slot, and oranges are 20 AP per slot. Anything less than that, I wouldn't even bother looting. If it's a green weapon or green piece of armor, maybe grab it if uh, you don't have anything else. Or if you're replacing a piece of gear, put that on, but that's only three AP per slot, not really that great. Just about everything else goes according to its rarity in terms of what it awards. Gray is one point, white is two, green is is three, blue is four, and purple and better is five AP per item. So it behooves you to try to get higher quality items that are only a single square in size in order to maximize how much bonus AP you're going to get for each one of those treasure items that you're carrying. The same is true for utility items, potions, the potions, consumables, bandages, uh, campfires, those kinds of things. They are only awarding AP based on their rarity, and the same is true for instruments. So if you get a loot, for instance, it is not going to be 10 AP per slot if it's purple. It is only going to be 5 AP for the entire instrument. Something very important to keep in mind. Also, jewelry falls into this category as well. You are only rewarded AP based on the rarity of the jewelry item. So if it's a ring, for instance, that is purple, you are only going to get 5 AP for that ring. The same is true for necklaces. Now that's the stuff that is the same. Here's what has changed. Dark and Darker Iron Mace decided that they were going to buff the amount of AP that is rewarded for getting mob kills regardless of the level or quality or difficulty of those mobs. All of them have been augmented in how much reward AP is being given for killing them. Also, the reward AP, with the exception of the really, really nice chests, like lion's heads, golden chests, and royal coffins, all of those used to be significantly more AP. They used to be 12 apiece. Uh, those have then, or since, been reduced. They are only worth 9 each now. All of the other normal chests that used to be only worth 1 AP are now worth more. Small oak chests are worth two, regular oak chests are worth five, and the large oak chests are worth seven. It's the same for all of the banded chests, the reinforced chests that you find on the map. They are all the same thing. Uh, the same th can be said for coffins, which are also five. From here, we'll talk about mobs, the, the enemies in the game, the AI NPCs. So all of the mobs with the exception of two when we talk about hr and higher all have the same ap value this includes death skulls by the way that are super easy to kill and come in like these swarms like on the pyramid for instance in hr crypts uh those those all of the mobs with the exception of two are six ap for normal mobs eight ap for the red elite mobs and 10 ap for the dark colored nightmare mobs the exceptions are the demon dog and the demon bat the big gargoyle looking guys uh, the demon dogs are 8, 10, and 12, and the demon bats are also 8, 10, and 12. Everything else in the game is 6, 8, 10. 
Now that's the normal mobs. Mini bosses also got buffed. The majority of them are either 20 for normal and 25 for elite. Or in the case of, uh, of the Demon Centaur, the Demon Berserker, uh, and the Cockatrice, uh, the Demon Centaur is 25 and 35. The Berserker goes up to 40 for the Nightmare one, 35 for the, the Elite one, and 25 for the Normal, and the Cockatrice is 20, 25, and 30. Now, this is a big buff from before, especially in the case of, like, the Frost Giants. So, on the Frost map, the Frost Giants, if you killed them, they were considered to be, like, a mini-boss, but they were only worth 8 AP. Now, they're worth 20 and 25. Definitely a jump up in terms of how much they're going to give you in killing them. And then, from here, we have the bosses. So, Cave Troll and Cyclops in Goblin Cave are worth 100 each. And then, Ghost King, Lich, and the Skeleton Warlord are all worth 150. So, for modifying this strat ever so slightly when it comes to the video that you're watching here the idea is to continue to gear swap stuff out then loot all of the chests that you possibly can in the game regardless of size or quality it doesn't matter you want to loot them all if you have the ability to destroy them using something like barb with their impact perk or in the case of a wizard using fireball or a warlock using hellfire you want to burn them down as fast as you possibly can if your interaction speed is low the idea here being in destroying them you're still going to get that interaction uh, point but you won't have to stand there and actually open them up by hand if you don't want to. From here, let's talk about luck. Now, yesterday I had the ability to be able to run a luck set, and I actually got a couple of really good rolls off of the, uh, the, the luck potion. In this case, my base luck kit was 206 luck, and then I got another 150 off of the large luck potion, giving me 356 luck. And while this isn't the maximum possible amount of luck that is available, given perks and talents and whatnot from places like Bard or Potion Chugger for Barbarians, it was a pretty substantially high number. What I can tell you and what I noticed is that the amount amount of good stuff that was coming out of chests and whatnot off of mobs and everything was significantly improved. Now granted, this is a very, very small sample size and obviously stands to need a, a lot more testing than what I've been able to catalog so far. The likelihood that you're going to get a better roll off of the treasure that shows up in them, and that's really the point, is better. I definitely saw more purples and I definitely saw more blues. I didn't really see hardly any like green treasure and I didn't see any white treasure at all out of any of the chests that I opened. However, considering the amount of AP that is necessary to be able to get past the larger ranks in order to get up to Demigod, none of this seemed like it was going to beat the threshold that was necessary, not to the extent that we would really want it to. That being said, there is something to, to say or put a pin into the idea of running with a trios group hitting all the chests and mini bosses and whatnot and letting the person that has the high luck roll end up looting all of the stuff off of the mobs in order to like maximize your chances. If you're hitting a lot of treasure piles or if you're hitting uh, like bosses and whatnot, that could definitely come into play in getting like legendary rolls or legendary gems especially out of some of these treasure piles as you're looting them. In that case, I could see luck possibly making a whole lot more sense. But as it stands, if you're trying to do like the solo run on the duos map, like I have been trying to min-max AP value, that doesn't seem like it would really carry nearly as well as just gear swapping like I've been doing right along. There is also the other aspect of PvP in this that I haven't mentioned yet either. The formula for PvP is a little bit convoluted. And the way that it's written is the AP reward for this is 14.85 points times the difference in rank between you and your opponent plus 99. And the difference in rank can be either positive or negative. If you are an exemplar and you are fighting someone at the blue level of rank at Pathfinder, there's going to be like a, a negative two or a negative three applied to that mathematical equation, which means that if you at the higher rank are the winner, your AP reward is going to be significantly less, somewhere around, say, 60 to 65 points. However, if it's the opposite way and the blue person beats the exemplar player, in that case, the blue player is going to get a bolus of AP north of 100, somewhere around 120 to 130. In which case, it's rewarding people that win if they are lower rank, and the people that are higher rank that are quote-unquote intended to win won't get as much of an AP reward for stomping a Timmy but the AP reward is there, and on average, it should be somewhere around 100. If you kill someone about equivalent rank as you, it's going to be about 113 points, 114 points of AP if they are the same rank. Obviously, 
this is going to end up uh, being something that they tweak over time, but there's about a 100 AP reward, let's say, on average for getting player kills. The idea behind this and the high cost of entry, I think, is really centralized around the idea that they want you to play the entire game. There is a problem with this, though, because in a lot of cases, especially if people live in parts of the planet that don't have high populations that are playing on servers at certain points during the day, the likelihood that you're going to run into PvP conflict in order to be able to get up that AP difference that you would need in order to be able to get these higher ranks is pretty slim, especially if you'd start talking weeks or months into the wipe cycle to begin with, the likelihood that you would see enough PvP to make up the four or 500 points of difference to get above these thresholds is, is kind of unlikely, especially considering the cost involved. The best run I had with gear swapping, and I mean finding a blue for every slot, a couple of purples even, uh, even replacing my weapon and having an inventory that was three quarters of the way full of single slots worth of treasure and killing a ton of mobs. I saw a 1,345 total AP out of the entire run. Now, if you compare that to the cost of entry for getting in there, that means my best possible run so far on the duos map was going to net me 45 points of AP if I was in Exemplar 1. At that rate, if I was netting 50 AP, that means that I, without dying, would have to generate a successful run to that equivalent of success 80 times in order to be able to get Demigod. Also consider that because the AP penalty, the cost of entry is so high at 1300 AP, that's about a third of the rank in order to be able to just uh, progress. If I lose that, that means that I'm likely going to derank myself back down into Exemplar 2, which I will then have to work my way on digging out of, which again is a significant amount of AP. To me, it looks as though the best way to go about doing this is going to have to be to hit every large chest that you can possibly come across the entire way through the dungeon while killing every single Wendigo on the map and hitting the treasure pile at the same time. Oh, but just so that everyone's aware, you only get AP for hitting the treasure pile once. Granted, you get to keep the loot and the treasure that you would find off of the treasure pile, but getting to the treasure pile and the AP reward is only off of the first instance of touching it. On a perfectly min-maxed run on the duos map, if you were capable of actually clearing out all of this stuff and hitting the treasure pile at the same time and still being able to extract and do this on a regular basis, I'm estimating that you would finish somewhere around 1,500 to maybe 1,600 AP. If you net 200, that means that you need to survive 20 in a row without dying at that rate in order to be able to pull it off. And a 1,500 AP take is just about as optimized of a run as you're possibly going to get. Remember, there's four Wendigos on the map. That's only 200 AP. So you have to find the other 1,300 somewhere. And that is not an easy thing to pull off given the time constraints of the map. Also consider that if you are netting 200 AP above that 1300 cost, you have to survive seven runs before you die. And you have to do that as efficiently as you possibly can. Really, as efficiently as just about any gamer possibly can for this game in order to make that work. Just to kind of further illustrate this point, Repose, seen here in number three, was finally able to finish off his run to Demigod. Uh, as I was editing this video, he actually posted this on Twitter. When I asked him in DMs about how it was going and what it took for him to get there, whether he was able to do it just through optimized gameplay or if he was being treasure funneled, he said flat out he was being hard funneled. The only way that anyone is getting to this point right now is to be circumventing the intended mechanics of the game. And uh, not for nothing, I just don't think that that is the way that this is supposed to go. Uh, if anything, if it's on a trios map, everyone that accumulates whatever they're accumulating should just be averaged across the three people. It shouldn't come down to whether or not one person ends up amassing all of the wealth themselves and then you kind of trade off in future runs. If I were you, what I would focus on is trying to maximize the AP of my runs as much as you possibly can using these min-max strategies. And at the same time, we're going to try and pray that Iron Mace reduces the AP cost for getting into these maps because honestly, it seems to be uh, counterproductive. And for the record, this isn't just me. Guys that have been consistently at the higher end of these leaderboards that have been grinding the game for 2,2500 hours. Now, I only have about 1,900, so I'm not like the most educated when it comes to some of these other folks that have been very, very proficient at this for a very long time. I've been playing the game right from the beginning, but I don't have as much available time as some of these other guys do. But they're still saying the same thing. All the guys that I've seen and talked to that are at the upper echelons of these ladders 
are all saying that this is a little bit too excessive in terms of its cost. But of course, these leaderboards are always a work in progress. We know that they're going to be modified. They were modified last season. They'll be modified again this season. In fact, I already put out a DM to some folks over at Iron Mace to check and see what was going on with this. And the, the, the response that I got was they're going to fix it. So at least we have that. Anyway, guys, that's what I have for this one. Thanks so much for coming and checking out the video. If you'd be so kind as to sub the channel if you enjoy the content, I would really appreciate that. It really, really does matter. But in the meantime, thank you so much for lending me your eyeballs, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.